welcome back students uh, we'll talk about features of cloning vectors now a cloning vector that is an artificially designed vector should have certain features which make it more efficient what are those features added some of the important features we will learn one it must have a region for starting the replication process so that region is called origin of replication region for origin of replication the second feature is multiple cloning sites many areas or sequences where you can add the insert that is the meaning we will discuss later and the third feature also we will take later that is about resistance marker resistance marker make uh, acting as a selectable marker so these two we will discuss later first let me talk about the region called origin of replication it is a short sequence in a plasmid that initiates replication see when you are using this as a vector and you are adding an insert at, at a particular place and then introducing it into a host cell uh, the host cell will not recognize or identify it unless and until the plasmid has a region called ORI origin of replication in short is written as ORI because the bacteria will give it its cell only when the genome introduced can do its work on its own it can replicate on its own it can, it will it will it will lend the machinery but it will not do the work of cloning ah, so the vector should have that region which starts the process of replication you know a bacterial cell uh, any cell undergoes the process of replication replication of dna in the s phase of the interface of a cell division so th at that time when the bacterial genome is uh, replicating along with that this insert on your recombinant dna should also replicate so origin of replication is a must to initiate replication when origin of replication makes a copy see this is how it is starting you can see here you can see here how it originates from a particular place and how the whole plasmid is replicating definitely in between there is a gene of interest that will also make copy so that is what it means clear so plasmid replication proceeds and the alien piece also will replicate so see here this is how it starts replication and why these two colors don't get confused i have uh, just trying to tell you about uh, later what we discuss high copy number and low copy number this replication is for high copy number many copies would be formed within a within a period of time whereas this kind of vectors have an ori which takes care of maintaining a low copy number we have to choose vector with high or high copy number or low copy number depending on the need for what purpose we are doing cloning so you'll understand that in a while so the host cell will allow the plasmid vector to replicate only if it has its own origin of replication so that along with it the alien piece will also replicate so i i hope you understood what is an ori more features of ori it controls the copy number as i said of the linked gene that means what ori is designed in a particular artificial cloning vector it it controls the copy number for example uh, this is a high copy number shown this is a low copy number shown so bacteriophages also have a very high copy number when i am choosing a vector for example for protein production i need a vector having an ori which supports high copy number if i am choosing a vector for cloning purpose for for some cloning and maintaining a library i need a vector having ori controlling a high copy number whereas if i am trying to express a toxic product i i want a cell to express a toxic product that means for example an antibacterial property of a fungal protein so a fungal protein is formed and i want to study that protein's nature on a bacteria how it kills a bacteria or how it is against a bacterial cell so i i don't want large amount of the toxic product so i will use a vector a cloning vector which supports low copy number so i hope that is clear second feature of a cloning vector is cloning sites which 
which is the area cloning sites are those areas of an artificially designed vector where you can introduce the gene of interest so that area is a that area in a cloning vector which is having many closely placed sequences if you are very clear with types of restriction enzymes uh, the sequence each restriction enzyme identifies if all that is clear you can see the restriction enzyme video if all those are clear that means which enzyme recognizes which specific sequence that should be clear to understand this so these areas we cannot draw all the sequences in a small you know design so i have just magnified it here you can see each line here represents one sequence for example this much area is a sequence reading 5 to 3 g a a t t c so that area will be cleaved between g and a by enzyme eco r1 okay so artificially designed vectors have such constructed regions with various sequences and each sequence being identified by a specific restriction enzyme only that restriction enzyme can be used to cleave it why so that you can use this the same vector for different type of inserts one one insert may be brought by cleaving with the enzyme eco r1 so you have to introduce it in the area cleaved by eco r1 in plasmid another another in, you can use the same plasmid for another work another purpose that is to bring an insert that is cleaved by bam h1 so that same bam h1 sequence should be here only then you can paste it so please make restriction enzymes very clear to understand this cloning site each sequence recognized by a specific restriction enzyme to cleave so that you can introduce an insert cut by that same restriction enzyme. I have just opened up these sequences. If you open up this plasmid, it will be too, uh, it will be having too many sequences like this. So uh, we denote it with just one line, and you can understand with this magnified area. Now, example, as I said, recognition sequence for eco R1 is represented by this one line. So that is the sequence which you see there. Okay. Uh, when more than uh, when more than one type of restriction enzyme can be used these many sequences are there so that more than one restriction enzyme can be used and you can use it for different uh, recombinant technology clear now coming to now another important thing about the sequence this much G A A T T C is a recognition sequence for eco R1. Suppose this is the enzyme eco R1. So it will cut the phosphodiester bond between G and A. Here also between G and A. Now, when such a vector is, this is just a randomly given sequence, just for understanding. Suppose a cloning vector, artificially designed vector, has a particular sequence of uh, recognition sequence to be, to be cleaved by eco R1. This sequence should not exist anywhere else. You can just read it and see. You will not see the same palindrome anywhere. G A A T T C you will not see anywhere. Because if the same recognition site or sequence is there anywhere else, suppose it is there here, same like this, the same sequence is suppose here and the same sequence is here. Okay, at the third area here. What will happen? Eco R1 will go around and cut everywhere between G and A. So, what is your uh, cloning vector like now? It is a three fragment. So, there is a confusion. Where will you join the insert? You have one insert. It should take only one insert. No host cell will express three protein together. Okay. Uh, in a recombinant work. So, this is a confusing thing. So, it should have only one recognition sequence for a particular enzyme. If it is more than one, there can be confusion and the result would be a complicated process in rdna technology you cannot use such cloning vector clear so this is a small uh, way just winding up with uh, this process of how cloning vector is used so this is a cloning plas uh, pl this is a plasmid um, artificially designed as a cloning vector and suppose this is a site g a a t t c uh, recognition site for eco r1 Okay, you are using an enzyme, eco R1, cleaving it between G and A. See how it breaks? 
a cohesive and sticky end formed. Sticky ends also we have discussed under restriction enzyme. Same way your uh, insert is ready. Your gene of interest that is a target gene is there. This area is a target gene. But as discussed earlier, either side of the target gene there is this recognition sequence. Naturally, your plasmid is smaller than your DNA isolated from a different source. So it will have more of such recognition sequence. So what will happen? The enzyme will cut here, here. The enzyme will cut between G and A here and here. So in between you are having intact insert gene and the two uh, overhangs are given off with sticky ends present along with the gene of interest. So what do you do now? You use ligase. In a ligase buffer, you allow this piece to join here. So it results into such a piece. You can see that AATTC is complement to this area. Okay. GC, GC portion is gone but the plasmid is having GC. So target genes AATTC will pair up with TTA. A, A, A pair with T, T pair with A like that. This side also, this portion will come and fix here. Understood that is how a recombinant plasmid is formed. You can see this kind of thing happening how the recombinant DNA is formed. So I hope the topic is very clear. Keep learning. And one important thing a vector should be intact with space only for an insert. Only for one insert. Okay. Keep learning.